All right, you lot. It's uh, five o'clock on a lovely Saturday morning. So I've come for a walk. I'm walking down this road. Uh, it's quite a nice road. You don't get very many fly tipping and things like that down here. But I've just come out for a walk to explore. Because I always drive down this road. But I always wonder, you know, you, when you're driving, you don't really know what's left and right. You look here and there, but you don't know much. So I thought I'd come and I'd have a look, see what's going on. And there's this place on the right hand side that always intrigues me because inside it, as you look over the fence, well, as you're driving, you see old cars and old buildings. And I'm not in focus. Damn camera! So let's have a look as we go past. We'll have a quick look through the fence. Don't know what's in there, so I'll we'll have to see. Yeah, it looks like just a load of old cars. Looks like they're ones that have been written off, maybe, or something. But there's an old head at roof of a car over there. Old buildings, old smashed up caravan. That always intrigues me, that does. Because as you drive past, you can look over there, because you're probably higher up in the car. And you can see the roof of that old car and the roof of the old buildings, and I'm like, oh, what the bloody hell is in there? Not a lot, by the looks of things. Not a lot at all. That place used to sell caravans, now they're a car wash. Look at that. Hopefully you can see that petrol, or unleaded petroleum, or if you're American, gas, over here is £1.29p.9. So that's basically £1.30. That is now. That's basically one pound thirty a litre. That's mad now. I don't have any pet. Well, I've got pet. Well, only, well, the Focus is the only petrol car that I've got, and I don't drive it, so I have to pay that. But diesel, I can't read what it says for diesel. I think diesel is about one thirty-four point nine, so basically one pound thirty-five per litre. It's going up. I thought it had gone down again, but it's going up. Never mind. What a crazy life. Can you look, guess what I'm doing? I'm sitting here, waiting for the uh, MOT garage to open, so I can get me MOT on this Discovery here. They open at eight o'clock. I got here at uh, 20 past five, and yeah, I'm not expecting this camera to focus. There we go, 7.14. Open 8 o'clock, I got here at 20 past 5. The reason I get here at this so early is because it's while you wait. And you can probably see behind me, there's already two cars. The blue one got here at about quarter to 6. And the red one turned up at about quarter to 7, I think it was. And that usually queues out the gate, uh, out the, at the uh, entrance there. It'll be queuing up round there. And this garage closes at 12 o'clock. And each MOT, uh, each MOT takes 45 minutes to do. So if I'm, and they open at 8 o'clock. So for example, if I was second in the queue, I'd have to wait until about 9 o'clock, roughly, quarter to 9, 9 o'clock to get that done, then I'd still be here for 45 minutes. It'd be nearly 10 o'clock by the time I get out. If I was third in the queue, you know, it ain't gonna happen. So I always get here uh, just after five, because uh, you have to have an MOT every year. Uh, every year. It used to be every three years, now it's every year. So every car has to have an MOT 
for you lot because some of you asked questions before and if you're American or in another country that I think you just call it an inspection don't you you lot that's basically all it is some bloke goes around lifts it up on a lift looks around make sure your tires ain't bald make sure your lights work make sure that your bald joints and track rods and all that rubbish ain't loose and wobbling make sure the car is roadworthy although they don't check a lot of stuff that could make it unroadworthy so I don't really see the point in it but there you go and also these days they're checking for emissions and things like that all that bollocks so here I am my friends after that I'm gonna go and have a drive around and give this a test because this is the first time I've driven this car um, first time I've driven this since I put that manifold on I haven't got the squeaky steering now well, I didn't fix that, so I don't know what's happened there. I don't think that is that leak anyway, but it is leaking. Anyway, I'm gonna get this done and we'll have a little drive about. Look at this, you look. This is something I don't understand. I'm not knocking anyone that does do this, but in a minute you'll see. I'm not knocking anyone that does do it, but I don't understand it. You see, that lady right there is in her pyjamas and slippers now forgive me if I'm mistaken and slightly out of focus but I don't understand this because the idea of pyjamas and slippers is that if you want to because I, I don't like to wear anything in bed <laughs> I don't like wearing things indoors take your shoes off and if it's night time I have my socks off and that's it but if you want to wear clothes in bed and if you want to wear something on your feet indoors, pajamas are clothes you uh, are clean. Not you ain't been outside in them, so they're clean. You know, not dirty to be worn in bed and around the house at night time. And slippers are clean shoes. If you want to put something on your feet, they've not been outside, so they're clean to walk around on your floors inside, which should be clean. You know, so if you take them outside and wear them outside and wear the slippers on the ground outside. They're no longer going to be clean to go inside your house. You're going to get a dirty floor and you're going to bring all the dirt in. So you might as well just wear your shoes anyway. And you might as well just wear your normal clothes in bed because now you've got your pyjamas all dirty from being outside. I don't understand some people. What, what's going on? What's the deal with that? It defeats the object. <laughs> Can't understand it. <laughs> this is taking a bloody good old charge, this battery. It's been flat for some time, I don't think, I don't know if it's going to come back. I've already had it on charge for five hours, so it's a good sign that it is starting to come back. As always, when it was completely dead, it did nothing. Then it went up to 30 for ages, now it's here. Turning it on for this evening, give it a few more hours charge, and uh, hopefully it will come back. Hmm. I have to get rid of that somehow. I know how. <laughs> there we go. That's, uh, that's a uh, professional way of emptying a, a, um, a nitro tank. I just had a random urge to start up the Savage then for some reason. Not an urge, but just a... Because the last time I used it, there was a bit of an, an iffy problem with it. Um, so I started it up. Seems to be running alright now. Oh well. I ain't really been doing a lot. But you lot will be proud, because look what I've got. 
I've got that one's an apple tree. That's an apple tree growing nicely. That's a banana tree. Another banana tree. Apple tree. Apple tree. Apple tree. Three banana trees are growing in there nicely. And I've got another one growing up. Um, not quite sure what's doing that. But it is sprouting up some more, and there's some little pups around it as well. They're growing up nicely. I'm not sure what I put in there. There were seeds from a um, a packet, but I can't remember what they were, so I'm just letting them grow. <laughs> I don't know what they were. But they're coming along well with that. I planted a little apple tree in the, in the soil here, in the ground. I'm hoping it will uh, grow. But the caterpillars have got to it. I've started eating it. They've eaten everything, them caterpillars. Look at the hedge. Yeah, those caterpillars, they've, they've devoured the, the apple tree there, most of it, and the hedge, but never mind, that's the way it goes. Had a big thunder, uh, thunderstorm last night, so plenty of rain on that grass, and they're for all those trees. Now, I'm going to do a video fairly soon. Let me just get rid of this tripod. I'm going to do a video soon, um, because this can't go on any longer. Um, this is the, strictly the spool from my SGS Strimmer, um, the one that's over here, see the SGS Strimmer, I've got the blade on it at the minute, but the trouble is, that keeps coming loose, the spool or the head or whatever you would like to call it that comes with it is absolutely shit, um, I can't work out their design, why they would do this, um, you have to wind it both in the same direction, um, that one goes that way, and that one also goes that way. So, it doesn't work. I think I did a video on it before, and you put the wire in, it's a pain in the bum to put the wire in, and then once you put it in, it just falls out, you know. It's only supposed to come out when this button's pushed. Um, here's a fully assembled one. It's only supposed to come out when that button there is pushed. But, it doesn't, it comes out all the time. Um, the minute you hit a uh, stinging net or whatever it is, or strimming, uh, it just that grabs on it and pulls it and then the wire comes out you you know if you've got a full spool that should last oh depending on obviously what you're streaming but half an hour to an hour you know i can go on a whole day streaming and probably only change this two or three times if i'm just streaming ordinary stinging nails um but this one is shit so what i'm gonna do i've got this brand new one that i bought as a replacement um, a long time ago now um so, I might, in the video I'm going to do, I might dissect this, because I'm going to go and buy a steel one. And, because they're good ones, and hopefully, I think they're the same thread, same size and everything. So, I should just better thread that on, and we'll be ready to rock and roll, because the steel spools are brilliant. Um, so, I think I might dissect this one, and the new one that I'm going to get the steel one, so I can compare it in the video. And, uh, yeah... Because it's a shame really, it's a real big shame because the strimmer itself is really good, the engine's good, the handles are good, the thing that lets it down is the stupid harness, that stupid harness that it comes with, that's a load of rubbish, so I'm going to try and put a steel harness on there, um, but the rest of it's all good, the only trouble is I put the blade on it and that keeps coming loose, doesn't matter how hard, how tight you do up that nut um, or anything, I put thread lock on it, it's a locking nut anyway, but it comes loose and a couple of times a blade flew off and nearly hit my shin and I don't want to be doing that anymore so you know it flew off hit a fence post and pinged back so I don't want to be doing that so that's that's no good that's a bad design as well so when I've had time to go down to the mower shop down the road um, because they're a, a steel dealer they deal in all the steel stuff so they, they'll have um, a spool hopefully um, and then I can just well, I'm going to measure the thread first to make sure it is the same. And then I'll go and get one. And uh, we'll do that video. But anyway, there's not really been a lot going on, really, to tell you the truth. Uh, I've got a few things still on the car, so I might do that bit of a Land Rover video coming up soon. But anyway, 
Oh, that's what I'm going to do, a radio video. Some of you asked for radio videos, so I'm going to be doing that soon. There's a lot of skip recently, a hell of a lot of skip. It's bloody, look at the humidity, I'm sweating like a pig. And that seems to bring over the skip. It's about 70% humidity at the moment. Um, it's about 27 to 30 degrees Celsius. So for some reason that's bringing over all the skip, which is good. So plenty of CB videos coming up soon. Anyway, I'm going to be off. I'll catch you later on, you lot. Take care, won't you?